Today I'm going to be testing out and showing you the current setup I have on my fire alarm demonstration board that has the ADT fire alarm control panel. So here is the first fire alarm today. It is a Wheelock MTS-1575 and the tone I have the horn on is set to slow whoop and that is not being coded by the fire alarm control panel. Going to the right, I have a Gentex WGEC B24-75 WR. That's a long model, but it's a Gentex Commander 3 with a blue strobe, and I have it wired up today as a security function. And I'll show you the device that activates it a little later. Keep on going to the right here. I have this medical alert quarter light, but I'm not gonna be testing it out today. And then I have this as a second fire alarm. It is a Wheelock 46T-G6-24-WS. And I did recently unbox this fire alarm, so definitely go check out that unboxing video if you haven't seen it already. But this alarm has a strobe that has a 0.4 Candela rating, which is not that bright at all. And the bell is 88 decibels at 10 feet. Going down, that is a Firelight ANN80 fire alarm enunciator. And then to the left, I have two smoke detectors. The one on the left is a Botch F220-P, and it's a photoelectric detector. And the one on the right is an Edwards EC10U-3, and it's an ionization detector. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna spray some canned smoke at it a little later on in the video and we'll see which detector activates first. I'm going to spray it at both of them. For a manual fire alarm activation device, or devices I guess, I have these two alarms that I also unboxed earlier. And these are Mirtone 73303U pull stations. And yes, they are both duplicates. This one just looks a little nicer because it doesn't have the paint mark on the side. But I will be pulling one of these today. I'm not sure which one I'm going to be pulling yet. Going down, this right here is the device that I have installed that is going to activate that police alarm. It kind of looks interesting, doesn't it? It is a Amzico HUSK-20, and it is technically called a hold-up switch. And it's basically a little switch with a button on the very bottom and it is normally a way you would activate a silent alarm in order to notify the police. So these are normally wired into security systems and they normally wouldn't activate a loud alarm like this one. It just silently called 911 in the background, but it's how I have it wired up today. But usually these are installed in places like banks where you can trip the alarm and the police will be in route without anyone knowing. All right, to start off the demonstration test today, I'm gonna to activate these smoke detectors, and I'm gonna do that by just spraying a bunch of canned smoke at both of them, and we'll see which one goes off first. So, here we go. There we go. And I did forget to mention that the bell is set on California code. So it goes for a little bit and then it stops for a little bit. And as you can see, it looks like the Edwards detector, the one on the right, never activated. And the Bosch detector was very quick to activate. So that's kind of cool. I guess we'll try and spray some more smoke at the Edwards one and see if we can get it to activate. This is a very old detector too, and it's ionization, so it might be losing some of its sensitivity.
It's probably just losing its sensitivity, sadly. Which is why they recommend you replace ionization detectors every 10 years. So, I'm going to go ahead and move on with the test and maybe it'll decide to randomly activate later on. Because there's still a lot of smoke in the air right now. Um, let's go ahead and pull one of these pull stations. I'm thinking we're going to go ahead and pull this one. So, here we go. It says pull here in case of fire. So you just pull it and the whole cover comes down. Kind of like a Firelight BG-8. So, here we go. And the alarm is now silenced again. So these pole stations can be kind of difficult to reset, but basically you have to bend this piece of metal that latches onto the front part here in order to uh, get it to close. So, and you do that with a long flathead screwdriver of some kind. Just like that. And we'll go ahead and pull the other one, might as well, while we're here. The alarm's now silenced, and I am going to go ahead and remove the botch detector head just to make it a little easier when I reset it. And here we go. Just like that. And then I'll go ahead and replace the detector head. Both the pull stations are now reset, and before I reset the main fire alarm control panel, I am going to go ahead and activate that AMSICO hold up switch. So, once again, in order to do it, you just push the button that's on the bottom of it. Here we go. Alright, I think that's going to conclude today's test. We'll go ahead and close up the main fire alarm control panel, the ADT Unimode 10 UD, as it's called. Thank you all for watching. Rate, comment, and subscribe. If you found any of this interesting, definitely go check out some of my other videos too. Have a great day, everyone.